Some places are great fun. Sometimes you turn up at a place and something mad's happened in the town that day and everyone's talking about it. And that's just dead exciting for me, like when you get on stage and you've got something new to, to get your teeth into. I was in Blackburn recently and there'd been an armed robbery about three or four doors down from the theatre. And everyone was talking about it. It was on the local news, it was in the paper, everything. And I spotted something that made me properly piss myself laughing. Right. Around the country, and if you, ever, if you ever need like a forensics team that work for the, for the police, they're called SOCO, right? They're called like a scene of crime officer, right? They're the, that's what we've always called them, right? In Blackburn, there's a van, I swear to God, it says CSI Blackburn. <laughs> I can piss myself. I thought you'd watch that, wouldn't you? You'd watch that. In Miami, Vegas, New York, Blackburn. <laughs> CSI Blackburn, coming soon to Channel 5. What's happened today? Someone's been killed with a piece of black pudding, Sarge. <laughs> <laughs> Tough job, that, though, up there. Forensics, my God. Everyone's got the same DNA. It's going to be fine. <laughs> I'm not in a culprit. <laughs> my God. What about the dental records? Nobody's got a fucking set of teeth, to be honest, Sarge. <laughs> Right in the north, right down to the south as well. I've spent a lot of time in London. Quite like London. Not, I'm not one of them northerners who's like, oh, bloody London. Don't mind it, it's fine. They seem nice people. I, um, I've got a mate who's a proper cockney. He does not understand northern ways at all. He doesn't understand that we will just have a chat with each other at a bus stop or in the street or anything like that. He just, it completely blows his mind. Because they don't like talking to strangers down there, you know. Whereas up here, we're happy to do that. It's weird, I don't know why, but we do. And I was in the Lake District, Lake Windermere. And uh, good work, yeah. You're from. <laughs> what are you, a fish? Is that where you are? <laughs> Woo! Lake Windermere! Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Having a wander around one Saturday morning. Beautiful sunny day, half past eight. Two old fellas walked past us. I'm with my mate. Two old fellas walked past us. They went, morning. I went, morning. My mate went, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I've no idea. What are you saying good morning to him for tonight? I was like, it's just because just it's the morning and it's good. He looked at me, he's like, you fucking northerners, I'll never understand. Right, they don't understand us. <laughs> this is proof that on day to day, Londoners need to cheer up, right? I was at Euston Station waiting for a train back up north. It was packed, packed concourse, roasting up day, middle of the heat wave, everyone's dressed wrong and miserable. And it was just getting busier and busier and trains were getting cancelled left, right and centre. And then out of nowhere, this businessman did a massive sneeze. You've never heard anything like it, because it sounded exactly like a fart. Right. <laughs> I know. And yet nobody around him laughed. <laughs> and I thought, what is wrong with this town? <laughs> what a horrendous place to live where farts aren't funny. Can you imagine? <laughs> Imagine. Let's be honest, if that was in Manchester, we'd have made him the mayor. Do you know what I mean? Like, he'd, he'd have definitely made Granada reports, you know what I mean? He'd be turning the Christmas lights on, that bastard. <laughs> it was a proper, like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> like, it was horrible. I was double over, proper laughing. Nothing from anyone. For weird, you're weird, you lot. And I'm glad you giggled at that, right? That's all it needed, a little giggle, you know. I told it in Lancaster for the first time it happened, on the day it happened. I didn't even get a giggle. They just stared at me. And I thought, that was really weird. That very rarely happens these days. Like, so I'm driving home, and I've got the CD, like I've, I've recorded it. And I'm driving home, listening back to it. And I get to that joke, and my toes are curling. I thought, oh, here's that joke that dies on its ass. And as soon as I started telling it, I realised why, why it didn't work. It's because I got my words mixed up. I don't know if it was the heat or the lights or the nerves. But I told that crowd in Lancaster that I heard a man at Euston Station do a fart. <laughs> that sounded exactly like a sneeze. <laughs> and quite rightly, they all went, well, that never fucking happened, right? And I thought, he's making this shit up. I thought, yes, fair enough, sometimes I am. But it's actually bloody happened. And if anything, that made-up scenario is even better than what really happened. <laughs> If you had a mate who every so often went, hey, Jay, 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 Jay. Aren't you? You have a <laughs> Let's get on Britain's Got Talent, Dave. Let's do it. I called this show, I called it First World Problems. You'll have seen 
that phrase, that title, uh, knocking about online for a couple of years now. The term first world problems really sums it up because for the people who don't know, it's those problems that if you ever met someone from the third world and heard their proper problems, you'd be pretty embarrassed about it. You know what I mean? They're, they're, their problems are things like staying alive, sanitation, where to get water and food from, and we're giving it, why do hot dogs come in eight, but the buns come in fucking six? Like, you know, like... <laughs> it's embarrassing, isn't it, when you think about it? <laughs> my brother was eating his dinner once, he looked dead disappointed. I said, what's up with you? He said, oh, I was just saving the best bit of my dinner till the end, and now I'm too full to eat it. <laughs> You're too full? That's a problem in this country! <laughs> Unbelievable. And you'll have your own, you'll all have your own individual first world problems that bother you. Like for me, the one thing that annoys me is why does nobody ever believe you when you say you're not sat on the remote? Why is that? That always annoys me. <laughs> you notice that? You see the remote? I've not seen it, no. You sat on it? No. <laughs> well, just get up, let's have a little look under your seat. That's my head right here now. So loads of things will just do your head in daily. It's weird, I mean, you know, if you ever hear me moaning about this job, please just punch me in the face. Like, I do, I, I love this job. I mean, I'm lazy, like I said, I'm not, you know, I don't really leave this little bit. I don't know why they bother lighting the rest of that, to be honest, I won't be using any of that. There'll be no McIntyre fucking being like, I won't be. Just every night. Fair play to him. I just got a stitch just from doing that little bit there. <laughs> My only negative is that I think it's the I get headaches. That's what I get. I get headaches. I think it's these lights. I think it's the lights, or maybe the nerves. It is a nerve-wracking job. Before I started the tour back in I don't know, back before the summer. We do a big shop, right? We do a massive shop. So you go to the supermarket with your tour manager, you buy loads of things that you're going to need, like hundreds of bottles of water and toiletries for backstage and snacks and things that you're just going to need, like just try and stock up. And I thought to myself, well, I get these headaches and I go through a couple of paracetamol a night, so why don't I just stock up on paracetamol? So I tried to buy about 48 packets of paracetamol. <laughs> now, I'm guessing from your reaction, you've already been made aware of a rule <laughs> that says you're not allowed to do that. Is it two packets? It's something like that, is it? Two packets are allowed. I didn't know this. I'm just there, massive shopping store, 48 packets within there. She's scanning it all like beep, 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 giving it that. And then she freezes mid scan and stares at me sympathetically. <laughs> I said, Well, everything all right? She said, I can't tell you that many paracetamol, I'm afraid. And I said, Oh, why? Still none the wiser. Now, you'd think she'd have some sort of euphemism for it. Maybe she'd get a manager to come over and explain. She's just come out of it. It's in case you kill yourself, love. <laughs>